Eugene Pandala. Welcome to the Trips and Global on Wheels podcast hour. Thank you, Ming, for having me with you. Of course, I'm going to read your short bio so that people have a bit of a, bit of a background about you, okay? So Eugene okay. Pandala... Eugene Pandala is an Indian architect known for building with values of environmental sustainability. He studied masters. uh, He got his masters in urban design from the School of Planning and Architecture in New Delhi and his fellowship in heritage conservation at the University of York and at Fort um, Bruckhurst. Eugene, uh, while studying at Delhi, um, he was inspired by the architect Hassam Fati. Is that right? Is that how you say his name? Right. Hassam Fati. Right. Hassan Fati. To, to right. build with mud. And uh, right. his, projects, his projects are often cited as good examples of Kerala heritage conservation initiatives. Um, so I know we just read that little uh, short bio about you, Eugene. Can you can you briefly introduce yourself in your own words and share about how you became passionate about um, climate change under the lens of you know being an architect? Uh, my important uh, idea, I mean, my important uh, field of work is uh, conserving the biodiversity of the area. Conserving biodiversity is important because we always think about uh, nature without just we think about trees and uh, and uh, we don't think about the biodiversity, the numerous biodiversity, the kind of complex system that we are living with. We just uh, see what whatever we see is what we talk about, but there are a lot of microorganisms like which we are not aware of. Even um, and one of the main problem that I found uh, with uh, every all these uh, people who get uh, involved with climate change and about talking about climate change, most of them, uh, you know, have gone through the headlines of the issue, but they have not read, gone through the text of the whole thing. They have not gone deeper into it. So when you go deeper into it. It, uh, we understand that every one of us, we have to, every one of us is really important, uh, important person sort of uh, to make our lifestyle, change our lifestyle to mitigate climate change. Why is it so important to incorporate nature and keep the natural hab- habitat in consideration, you know, when designing for architectural purposes? I know you once said that nature is your greatest inspiration. Um, quoting you, I don't wish to create magnificent structures that stand out in the location they are placed in. I love building structures that embrace the surrounding so that the balance of nature is not forfeited. Right. It's very sensible that, uh, you know, we we are basically another animal in this planet. We're not human beings. So only human beings want their... Uh, habitat to be so elaborate, so unfriendly to nature, and long, long lasting. It We require to last for generations. Whereas the bird, I mean, all these other living organisms, they make a habitat just for them to live. Maybe one generation more. That's it. So actually, we, are, we don't make sense uh, to the nature at all. You know? We make sense to ourselves. That is a that's a problem. Yeah, and then I know you know mud is a huge component in in your designs, the kind of material that you use, graphene and mud, and you think these kinds of materials are more eco friendly. So my question is, is why do you think gra- mud and graphene is more eco friendly than the you know than the other materials that we use? widely in, in, you know, modern structures such as concrete and in other materials? See, uh, if you start, uh, if you start uh, any, any product, if you take any product, human beings, all cement, 
or any products that comes out of earth like a glass everything is mined from earth but we have to uh, alter it we actually alter the material we spend huge amount of uh, energy in terms of its process that's called the embodied energy the energy required to alter it if you want when you're making cement you you use fossil fuel to make uh, a cement make cement and do a lot of emissions and uh, sand you know sand we when we mine uh, from the 80 percent of the mine, mining in the world is uh, sand mining and that goes to mainly for concrete and for cement related work so but uh, earth is basically if you can use earth as such such that it can be uh, just go it can get back to earth without much of a problem that is the best possible practice instead of altering it using a lot of energy and you know altering making it very difficult for the nature to handle it to return back to 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 nature and then go, going back to the broader picture of climate change you know um what what do you think that us can learn from india about how you know your country is dealing with co climate change and trying to grapple with this issue see every every person can contribute nowadays it is one world i can consider because of the information technology that we have say we are talking from a distant uh, location and so everyone should share contribute uh, in india uh, i don't think uh, uh, we i i feel that everyone should do more but we, i think most of us are not doing sufficiently even us is not i feel that from looking from far away i also feel that uh, climate change uh, is not a big issue to most of the people it's not a big issue but it has it has to be made as an issue in a way um, so narrowing the focus just a little bit here, how do you think climate change is affecting people with disabilities in India? So it is affecting everyone. Climate change, not only disabilities, is one area where uh, we, we have even not gone much into that area. Even normal, even if you talk about relating to climate, it's a different thing, but uh, disability, access disability access barrier free environment all those things are not not a uh, important thing for many people many governments in the state i mean in india i feel so sad that even uh, not just disabled people but even people normal people cannot walk safely through the uh, systems that we have along the roads and public networks even to a building that uh, we built even now Hardly, uh, we don't uh, make uh, we don't make uh, access proper access wheelchair access. It's it's very sad, very sad. Uh, not only wheelchair, in terms of everything like uh, hearing, all this kind of disabilities. We just talk uh, not just mobility but other kind of disabilities also. We have to be compassionate about and work out because there are we have technologies. How do you think? you can use these kind of materials how do you think they can better help you create and design buildings that are more accessible to people with disabilities have you ever thought of that i actually uh, mud of course i do wherever it's possible to to go for a solution with mud i you certainly use it you know. because you know you don't need to alter it mm -hmm. we can use it everywhere so you like to use more um, uh, original materials, I suppose. Natural, it's one word. Natural thing. materials. Natural materials. Natural sorry. Natural um, materials. So, uh, so how do those natural materials help you create structures that are more accessible to people of all needs? So the, every 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 designs that we do now, lately, that means not ten years back. Ten years back, we didn't go for that kind of. Uh, attention for designs but now since last 10 years we uh, actually we when we do design even we have to in a public facility we need to provide a washroom which is accessible for disabled people you know that is a that, that is I was, fortunately i was working with that uh, with the government 
to bring in uh, standards for this is, I mean, barrier free access to people. Mm, our last question, which is, do you think it's possible to create eco friendly, you know, buildings that is also accessible for people with disabilities? Um, if so, do you think it's harder? It's not harder at all, because if you design it, when you start, when you start the, the design process is what is uh, at the design stage, if you consider uh, disability access, it becomes easier. It does. It makes it uh, simple. <coughs> but to but to tweak a building, you know, to modify a building to make it disabled uh, friendly, disabled friendly, it becomes difficult. But when you're designing it, when you make a new building, it's easier to make uh, barrier free access. Certainly, but I think we should all, it should be made mandatory all over the world to have barrier-free access. Then only it makes sense. It, then only it makes it inclusive, you know. We have to be inclusive to everyone. Yeah, exactly. And so for your, I know you've designed a lot of different buildings and, and they look aesthetically amazing. You know, it looks very impressive. Um, so with those buildings, are, are some of them accessible to people with disabilities, do you think? If so, how? Most of them, most of them are uh, accessible. But wherever it is possible, I drive in and I try to make, convince my clients to make it accessible because that really makes uh, sense. Mm -hmm. And so how, how, are they, um, how are they accessible? Um, is do they have ramps or white doors? Like, what makes your structures accessible to people with disabilities? Usually, with the ramps, and uh, you know, you uh, we give accessibility by providing ramps, public buildings, not uh, individual public. I mean, private residences, but for public buildings, you certainly have to have. Um, accessibility by using ramps, elevators, and so on. So it is made. Thank yeah, you. that's great. I'm glad to see that, you know, it's it's been on your mind and in, in incorporated into some of your designs. Um, I think moving forward, you're right, you know, climbing, climbing, climate change is such an urgent, urgent issue in the world. And um, you know accessibility, as you may know, there are over a billion people um, in this world that have a disability. And so, to create structures that are accessible to all is also very crucial. So, um, thank you so much for coming on and answering our questions. And I know you have a lot of knowledge in this area, so we appreciate you for coming on. Thank you so much. Uh, we will have to be in touch. We'll have to continue with this kind of conversation and thank you so much for having me did you like yeah. this video if so share with your friends and be sure to follow us on social media and if you want even more resources be sure to sign up for our email updates on our website traipsingglobal.com keep learning new perspectives keep being inclusive because it will make the world a better place for you and for everyone else Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on another episode of the Trips and Global on Wheels podcast hour.